continue to celebrate women on this International Women's Day. We also want to talk about women's health. We have unique health needs at each stage of our lives, and we face more complexities than men, like childbirth and menopause. Women are also more likely to die after a heart attack than men. So when it comes to preventative care, what kind of checkups and exams do we need, and how often should we get them? Let's ask the expert. Joining me now is Dr. Sonal Harder with Dignity Health Medical Group. All right, Sonal, you've got a list of the mm -hmm. top 12 important screenings that we need to get to. So let's kick it off with cervical cancer. Okay, so cervical cancer, we use two tests, pap smears and HBV testing. Starts at 21, and we are talking about asymptomatic average risk women. Okay, okay. so 21 to 64, uh, under the age of 29, so from 29 to 30, I would say pap smears every three years. Over the age of 30 for until 65, it's either PAP with HPV testing every five years uh -huh. or PAP every three years. So those are the recommendations for cervical cancer screening. Yeah. Breast cancer screening uh, recently changed updated guidelines. So it starts at 40, ends at 74, mm -hmm. one to two years using a screening mammography as a way to screen for breast cancer. Colon cancer, that's a yes. big one, and those guidelines have also updated. So it starts at 45 and actually ends at 75, so 40 to 75. Colonoscopy is the gold standard. It's a direct visualization of the colon with the endoscope. Right. Now, there are two other options for that. Uh, one is Cologuard, which is testing DNA on the stool, mm -hmm. abnormal DNA. That's every three years. Okay. And FIT test, which is actually blood tests on the stools every year. However, if those two are positive, then you do need a colonoscopy as a next step to evaluate. Okay, here's my question with a colonoscopy, though. Mm -hmm. I've heard 45 and I've heard 50. Mm -hmm. What is it? So 50 was the old guidelines, yes. but the incidence of colon cancer has gone up. Right. So the guidelines have moved down to 45 now. So oh. it is 45, and most insurance companies do cover for 45 onwards. Oh, okay. I'm glad so, you clarified absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay, what else should we know? Okay, so next is STD and HIV screening. So yes. HIV screening once in a lifetime for all adults and adolescents, females, starting at the age of 13 until 65. Okay. Once, unless they have higher risks, then you know the guidelines change. But right. in average risk, that's the guideline. Uh, under the age of 25, women who are sexually active should be tested once a year for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Oh, um, and okay. so those are the guidelines on STD and HIV. Yeah, you also say bone health screening. That's yes. important too. Absolutely. So 65 and over, again, in average risk. But if there are an, any other risk factors, those guidelines change and you need a bone density a little bit earlier. Okay. But for average risk, 65 onwards, once every two years. I've always wondered, how do they do the bone density test? So it's like an x-ray of okay. your bones, specifically focusing on your lumbar, so back and your hip joint, oh. um, just to take a look at density compared to younger women, so before menopause and after menopause. Yeah. Another thing that I've noticed just recently with my annuals, they do a depression and anxiety screening. That's kind of fairly new, right? And very important. Yeah. And this is once a year. We have two different templates, so questions that actually um, address anxiety and depression. We call them GAD7 for anxiety mm -hmm. and PHQ9 for depression. All doctor's offices have this. In fact, it's necessary to ask those questions mm -hmm. once a year to all your patients. I tend to do it around their physicals. Yes, and that's exactly when, you know, I'm on the laptop and I'm filling it out and adding up the numbers and everything like that. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know we have a lot more tests because, like I said, we have 12. However, not enough time. So sure. But if people forget or they just want to see all the tests and screenings, where should they go? So USPSTF, US, United States Preventive Task Forces, mm -hmm. is a great website. They keep it updated. CDC also has some recommendations. So those are the two websites I would say people should go to for updated guidelines. Okay, excellent information, Sonal, as always. Thank you so much. Now, if you have any questions that you want to ask our expert today, text us. 602-444-1212. Again, make sure to let us know who you are and where you're texting from and we're going to get your questions answered live on the air in about 20 minutes. Lindsay over